tough difficult to be father and we've yep. already what the coin off there were. Yep. That they made it into Jesus, Father. Yep. We may pray for the our city, our homeland of Jerusalem, Father. That one day you'll be back as you'll walk through that gate to yep. receiving your kingdom yep. here on earth. Father, it is through you that we lift up all these prayers. Yep.
But I was looking ahead, and there's a verse in there. I was going to use it tomorrow night, but it has to do with God using the Word to bless us. How many believe the Word will bless you? Yes, sir. Walking in the Word will help you physically, spiritually, emotionally, and mentally. Yes, sir. I promise you. How many found that out in your life? It's been a journey, but God's helped me know that in spite of me. You'll be your own worst problem to get in God's blessing. So I want you to turn to 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel, then we'll get back to the preserving. The Word of God can, I promise you, preserve your life. The Word of God can preserve your life. Stand up, 1 Samuel chapter number 26. Now, I hope I won't get on anybody's toes that's teaching next Sunday, but I just had to use this because, again, I saw it. And I thank it's for us tonight for this service. 1 Samuel 26. Saul repents of what his sin is after he's been pursuing David. Next week's lessons go about David sneaking in where Saul's asleep. I want you to think about something, too, as you prepare teachers. The Bible says, and God put a deep sleep upon Saul and Abner. That's the only reason they could sneak right up there to him. Have you ever thought about God putting a deep sleep upon all the animals on the ark? You think about that. I hear people say, well, you know, they had to feed and water and get out this and get out that and all that stuff. Not if he put them to sleep, they didn't have to do nothing. How many rather think about it? I think that's better, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. I might have liked men on the if I didn't have to do a whole lot, wouldn't you? God can put a, did he put a deep sleep on Adam? Yeah. Before he took the rib out of her son? Let me believe God can do whatever he wants to do. Hallelujah. I don't think some of us really believe that, but you'll act it out in your life, and this is what this verse talks about. Verse number 23. Verse Samuel 26. 23. The Lord render to every man, person, his righteousness and his faithfulness. For the Lord delivered thee into my hand today, but I would not stretch forth my hand against the Lord's anointing. Now, I want to pay attention to the first part of the verse. It says, The Lord render to every man his righteousness and his faithfulness. You may be seated. Dear Lord, tonight I would ask that you would anoint our lips, give us the unction of thy spirit. I pray once again that you take these lips of clay and say with it what you may. Dear Lord, that it would again uh, bless and Lord help us in our spirits, the very words by your Holy Spirit, through these lips of clay, through this vessel tonight, that you would pour out yourself, Lord, upon us. And that we might once again understand more about the word when we leave here than when we came in here. Lord, I testified to a lady this morning going across the parking lot after all the services. I, I, I know you're doing something right now. Yes, Lord. You're doing something in this place right now. Yeah. You, you're doing something different in this preacher's life since <gasps> COVID started. Yeah. Something since revival. I sensed a turning in my spirit since revival. The preaching is different. The depth of it is different. The challenge on it has been different. Lord, tonight I would love your people to be able to give a testimony unto you as you look into this place right now. Since COVID has started, I want you to lift a hand to the Lord if he has blessed you with something in the word that you didn't have before COVID started. Lord, you see all of that. I'm not looking. You see that. That's that, that's that person's testimony to you. You can put your hands down. What I'm doing is I'm asking you to keep on doing it. Do it now. Do it tonight. May we receive out of this word that which you've laid on our spirit. Once again, we praise you and thank you, dear Lord God, for any decisions that will be made tonight that has not been made that needs to be made. 
There's some sitting here that needs to come to this altar when we get done preaching and make a decision for you publicly. Amen. On their knees before you, the God of heaven, doing it, testifying and confessing before men by just coming, by just coming, not speaking to our church, just coming before everybody here and that being a testimony in itself that you have changed something in your life. Dear Lord, whatever it is, pray your spirit lead us in that. Thank for the promise of Isaiah once again that your word never returns unto you void. It will accomplish that which you please and prosper unto the things whereunto you send it. And it's not by the power of the might of a man, but it is by your spirit, saith the Lord. Speak to us now. Let me praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The Bible says there, Saul was told by David that God would render to every man according to his righteousness and his faithfulness. He goes on to state there, I did not take your life, even though it was given to me, even though that God is going to put a, has put a deep sleep upon you. I stole your cruise of water. I took your spear. You know that I've been close enough to do that, but I would not take your life. I want you to know that God's going to render to every person, every person according to your righteousness and your faithfulness. You know what that means tonight, y'all? God's going to pay you back based on what you believe in the book. Hallelujah. Now the word render right there means a great deal. That's the word that kind of captured my spirit. Because I know the word render means to pay back. Hallelujah. Or it really means, when I looked it up, it really means a reward. God will reward you based on your righteousness and faithfulness. God will repay you based on your Righteousness and your faithfulness. God will recompense, which means what? Recompense. Pay back. He will recompense you based on your righteousness and your faithfulness. He will, you will reap based on your righteousness and your faithfulness. So it comes down to the understanding that based on what I am in my journey, Listen, he uses two things. What are they? Your righteousness and your faithfulness. Now let's clear up one thing before we get anything going right there started. Okay? Because what I've tried to tell people on Monday night, the folks that come on Monday night between 50, 45, and 55, depending on what Monday night it is. Okay? The Bible says that you can be righteous. How many believe that you can be righteous? How many believe that it's not your righteousness? It's not yours. What's the Bible say about our personal righteousness? It's just like a filthy rag. How many of you guys got filthy rags in your shop? Okay, you know exactly what a filthy rag is. Okay? That's what our righteousness is. But what we're going to talk about, at least on this, is that God's righteousness has been imputed or reckoned to my account. Does everybody understand that? Uh, I, how many ever got a bill in the mail? <laughs> well, if you hadn't, I want to shake your hand after the service. I want you to tell me how you did that, okay? So I've got an account that's being kept in heaven. Does everybody understand that? It's got my name on it. It's a ledger. Y'all can say, oh, Lord, preacher, where'd you get that at? Well, they call them books, but I'm calling it a ledger. Yeah. You got your name in a book up there, and it's in one of two books. One's either works or one's the book of life. Before you get right with God, God's writing down all the things that you've done wrong. All the sins, all the nastiness, all the wickeds, everything, all the words. He's even wrote down your thoughts. He says, I know your thoughts. When Jesus was walking on the earth, he said, I, he knew their thoughts. You know, he'd sit around trying to teach. The Pharisees get a little edgy. The book says, and he knew their thoughts. He's writing them down. That ain't one way you can get all those bad stuff, all that marked out. What has to happen? He's got to get your name transferred. Amen. You got to go to another ledger. Yeah. What's the name of that? Of Lamb's Book of, Book of Life. This ledger becomes where it says payment made. Amen. Payment made. Transfers your name to that other book. Okay? How many like to get them bills that say zero? 
Nothing owed. Okay, like in Okay, You owe nothing. Tonight, your righteousness is not worth anything. Right. Amen. What happens is, is God has taken and to your account, yeah. and he's written down the righteousness of my son. Right. He's put Amen. it under your name on your account. Yes, sir. It's not yours. It's his. Uh -huh. This is the word impute in the King James Version. Amen. Do you have anybody deserve it? Yes, Absolutely not. But God in his great mercy and his grace, hallelujah. Amen. That he's reckoned it to my account. Yes, sir. Not because of what you did. But because of who he is and what he did. Amen. Yes, sir. That's great stuff. Now listen to this. So what I now in this in night in 2020, in 2020, when I look at this verse, I have to view it in light of 2020, not in first Samuel. That's right. Everybody understand? If I'm gonna get anything out of it, I gotta do that. The Lord paid back every man according to the righteousness that he possesses. Do you possess any tonight? So those of you that come on Monday night, the Hunger Club, I want you to speak the verse that our club is founded upon. Blessed are they, hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. So when a Christian tells me you cannot be righteous and there's none righteous, no, not one, they're using the scriptures illegally, illiterately, and wrongly. Right. Why? Because it's not yours. Right. It's his righteousness that's been put to your account. Amen. How many understand that? I don't walk around in mine. I'm walking around in his. Amen. Yes, sir. It makes no difference what you see. It only matters what he sees. Amen. See, because I'm my worst critic. And you know what? Rightly so, you should be. Yes, sir. If you're not your worst critic, then have mercy on a person that won't tell you anything. Because you're not going to find that. The only way that I can be my worst critic is I want God to show me everything that I need to know about me. Amen. So he, again, renders. What does render mean? Pays me back. Listen now. So will God give you preservation if you follow the word? Will he preserve your life? Absolutely. He'll preserve your life. Based on the righteousness of him imputed unto you. He don't want to take your life. He don't, I honestly believe he really don't want you to be sick unless he's going to teach you something in the sickness. How many believe that? See, I believe there's things that I had to learn through what all that happened to me physically that I didn't even know was going on. I had to learn what, I had to figure out why was he allowing that. A lot of it was the idea of just making me put myself in his hands and trust him. Because it's hard, I told y'all many times when I had those hips replaced that I didn't even know they was going bad. I mean, I just thought I was getting old. Like some of y'all. <laughs> Some of them joints just wear out. It's the way the body God created, put judgment on it. But mine was doing it before time. But also, I was born that way. So I was born into the earth not knowing that there was something wrong with my hip joints. Now, playing ball and all that had no problem until they was wore out. Around 50, 52, 55, right now, I just couldn't do nothing anymore. Couldn't run, couldn't, couldn't jog, couldn't do that, wanted to, hurt all the time. Rest of the y'all know how these, how many's hurt, how many's hurt, you know what I'm talking about. All that stuff hurt. And so you kind of get an idea, something ain't quite right, so you find out what's wrong. And then you see x-rays, and you say, man, I was born like that? How did I make it this far? Well, God just blessed you, and when you're young, you can pretty well fight through anything. Right. See, you don't feel as much pain when you're young as when you get old. In fact, it don't really last long when you're young. But it lasts over time when you get older. And so the idea is, is I, 
What was God teaching me? Well, I'm just, I let you be born like that. Well, why did he let me be born like that? See, listen, I'm going to tell you like I tell the folks on, on Monday nights. I'm responsible to give you the truth as far as what he lays on my spirit. After that, it's you. Some of you are going to have to figure these things out with the Holy Ghost and not with the preacher. And you're going to have to wrestle with him too. You're going to have to wrestle with some preconceived things that you was taught way a long time ago that's not biblical. So now if I was going to preach about God healing, what do I've got to get out of that? How's God going to teach me? I'm going to have to be healed. Or at least protected. Or at least spared. Everybody listen to me? So I'm just giving you a testimony of my life based on what I know. Amen. See, I couldn't do that at 30, 35, and 40. I had to get some time under me to look back and the Holy Ghost began to point at things and put it together for me to give me spiritual understanding. Amen. Does everybody understand that? Okay. So I had fear of having any kind of surgery. Anybody not like surgery? Well, I don't like it. I didn't like none of it. We still don't like it. If you like surgery, you've got problems. <laughs> you like being cut off. You, I, we need the counsel. <laughs> Anybody love having shots? I mean, we do them, but it ain't like the greatest thing we like doing in the world. Does everybody kind of understand that? So, can you trust God through something like that? All right, so in my existence, in the Quisenberry side, there's all kinds of blood clot issues in circulation. And I've come to understand that. It's not as much in the, well, it's in both sides, my mama's side and my daddy's side. So circulation should be in the forefront of my brain as I get older. Not blood clotting foods. Not country ham every morning. See, when you're young, what can you do? Eat all that all you want to, why? Oh, you're going to run that mess off. Your metabolism's high. What happens as you get older? What, what, you wonder what happened to the metabolism. But typically what happens is the metabolism goes away, but the eating pattern stays the same. And so what happens? We expand. So I have, I've had people in my daddy's side of the family that died of blood clots during operation and surgeries and right after. So if I'm going to talk to you about being delivered from fear, what have I got to comment? Fear. Fear of what? Surgeries? Blood clots? Instant death. You can't do that running from it. You can't do that tonight. What you got to do? Face it with Jesus. So if I'm going to have major surgery, and all on that side of the family, it's all been about clots in the leg. Because that's where they format, travel, go to heart, lung, dead. That his brother, 48 years old, died. He's getting ready to go home. Had his veins stripped in his leg, Cleveland, Ohio. Never forget, called me. I had to call my daddy, tell him his little brother was dead. I wasn't but 18 years old. He was at the beach. We stayed home. I'd have football come up. Didn't go. He's getting ready to go home after stripping his varicose veins because he stood it forward all day long. When you stand all day long, what happens in a in one spot? Your blood veins get bad. Yeah. Not moving. Putting on his clothes, fell back dead on the beach. 48. That's real young. My sister, I think John had died, didn't she? She had already died. Y'all remember John that went here? You remember Chris, her son? Played the guitar with me up in the old bar long? Folks, both of them is dead. See, I, I think 
we want that kind of life where we're shielded from all of that stuff. We want to have a Christianity that just don't have to go through none of that. Let me tell you one thing. You're going to render according to your faithfulness. And if you want to be shielded, there's no such thing as faithfulness. Because you won't step out of the bubble. You won't step out of the bubble that you know. You won't face nothing that you have fear of. You won't be able to tell nobody else either about it. So what God, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna move on preaching, see I'm not just a one-dimensional preacher. Okay? I'm just not gonna talk to people not need to get saved, tell you to give your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ because his blood's done been shed for you and he died at Calvary. He doesn't make the offering, he's not making no more payment for you. I can preach that all night long, all day long, and every service. Not gonna do that. Why? Because I'm not a one-dimensional preacher, but they're preachers, that's all they know how to preach. Okay, I'm not gonna preach all holiness. Why? Because you got to get people saved and start getting them holy. So you got to have all those areas. So if I'm going to start talking about God sparing you from your fear and the demon spirit of fear and being healed, I've got to be able to go through that. So what does he do? He, pre he predetermined, pre not He knew it all. He is going to let me be born that way to be able to face it and deal with all the issues of heritage heredity, genes to face the fear of that so I can tell you what? You can do it. God will help you. He'll protect you. In fact, you can go under there just trusting Him and just praising His name and once you get that I don't care shot, you're good to go. How many know about them good old I don't care shots? <laughs> So you don't mind going through that, but you have to reconcile. You know what you have to reconcile? Dying on the table. Mm -hmm. Y'all do know that, don't you? Yeah. Now, I'm not going to come up there when you have surgeons and say, I just hope to pray to God you don't die on the table in there. <laughs> Y'all don't want me to come and do that. What do you want me to tell you? Oh, it's going to be over just like that. You'll be looking at the nurse saying, nothing will be done. Everything will be good. You'll be home. Man, it'll be like you never went through nothing. I hope you don't die on the table. <laughs> Which one would you rather hear? The good one. Now, I can't give you the good one unless what? That I know. I'm, just, I'm, a, I'm pretty sure that's why we don't have a good testimonies in churches more because we ain't been through nothing. Tell us, preacher. Tell us. We scared our way through it. Shake and nervous and worried and sweat and blood pressure up all the way through the thing and then finally and it just gets a little bit better. Jesus didn't help you with nothing. Am I with me? The Lord will render or pay you, pay back to you for your right living. And see, there's no way I can go into a surgery if I don't think I'm living right. Y'all with me? Especially if it's a major one. Especially if it's dealing with places where I've already known I got relatives that have died of blood clots and you're operating down this way. I don't think so. Had to reconcile that. Had to reconcile the heart issue. Katie done had it. Everybody had it. Here, I got to go through it. I didn't even know why. I'm fine. I ain't got no problems. Or at least so I think. I mean, I'm running out. I should tell you, I walk every morning. I lift weights three times a week, and I do all of that stuff. I do put 25 push-ups, 30 push-ups every morning. So it ain't like that I'm not doing anything to try to keep myself healthy enough to preach hellfire and brimstone to y'all. I'm just messing. Y'all know I don't preach that. <laughs> you ain't heard me preach on hell in a long time. I might, give, I might give it to you, but I ain't preached on it. So when they go through the getting on the treadmill, how many's been on the treadmill? Well, what's going on when you get on the treadmill anyway? You already stressed out, why? Because you're on the treadmill. Yeah. <laughs> 
Does everybody understand that? So you got to deal with the stress of that, the stress of being on the stress, stress test. <laughs> Not counting what they might already know or think. Or what the thought you got to deal with that I might kill over on the treadmill. Right? Oh, ask Fred Bigfoot. That's how they caught his. He was doing the tread test and said, are you all right, sir? And Fred said, oh, yeah, I think so. I don't think so. You need to lay down right here. They never let him come home till the heart cast was done. See, you don't go there thinking that. But you better go there trusting. So the question is, does your righteousness lie in your being able to control it? Or his righteousness that does control it? Is everybody with me? I possess his righteousness. I'm not ashamed to tell that to nobody. Don't back up. I ain't going to apologize for it. I ain't going to be ashamed about it. Makes no difference what you think about it. You can fight me. Give me scripture about it. I'll give it right back to you. It's not mine. It's his. So you face the hard cat. And then they tell you, hey, you, you've had a heart attack. Stop them. Well, that means if I've had one, what? One. So I got to live with that. How do I live with that? Trust. Right artery slap block, one other, the other, the half. So I go back every time, got to go right now. So I say, okay, tell me about the other one. Because this one over here grew veins around me. Woohoo! My body did it. Not my body, but. This body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. You have been bought. You are not your own. Therefore, glorify God in your. See, that's why you better get off that tobacco and that wine drinking and them gambling and them cigarettes and chewing tobacco and dipping stuff and, and scratch offs. You better get off of that mess. That ain't no holy vessel. How can you expect God to pay you back for righteousness when you don't possess it? Come on, y'all. That's good, man. Amen. Yes, sir. Good. Yes, sir. Because he will render to you good or bad. Ain't that what it says? Mm -hmm. So what if I have no righteousness? What if I have no faith? He can't do nothing for me. So when I go to have something done, I'm going to be a nervous wreck. Y'all do know they have to give you shots to calm you down. Yeah. Wouldn't it be better to have the Holy Ghost calm us? Yeah. And the shot just gives you the best. Well, I mean, that's the best of both worlds right now. Right? <laughs> I might not just say that right now. <laughs> I think Ashley got a picture of me giving the peace sign going down the hall. <laughs> I threatened everybody saying, sir, I'm going to take a picture of you with your little blue bonnet on and put it on the bulletin board at church. How <laughs> many know what the blue bonnet is? Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> what about your faith? He will render a payback or give you a reward based on your, your righteousness, which should be all his. But if you hadn't given him your life, you possess none. So how can he keep you alive or preserve you? And I can tell you right now, according to the word, a fool will not live out half his life. So you keep being a fool. You'll die around 40 or 50. Real quick. Book says so. He gives you chance after chance after chance after chance after chance. And you know what I believe? If you're here tonight and you've never given your heart to the Lord Jesus, this is your time. Amen. Because all he promises is once. How many had more than one time? 
He gave me more than one time. But you can't rest on that. If you're if you get to hear it one time, that's all he's desired to give you and may give you. So the Lord pays me back. So Lord, I want long life. I want to be preserved. I want you to keep me safe. I want you to keep me protected. I want you to bless my family. I want you to bless my kids. I want you to bless my wife. I want you to protect us everywhere we go, as we go out, and as we come in. How am I going to get that then? What's the book say? He pays me back according to the righteousness I walk in. Can you quote verses about righteousness? Jesus said in the same chapter, Matthew 5, that the hunger club is founded on, right down below that, he says this, unless your righteousness exceed that of a scribe and a Pharisee, you shall in no wise enter the kingdom of heaven. Man. You know what that means? All your religions on the outside and your heart's still dirty. And unless you get past that, you will not go to heaven. He leadeth me in the paths of Well, why aren't you in that path then? Why are you in the path of wickedness and flesh and world? And addictions. Why are you in that path? Why are you denying righteousness? Why are you saying can't nobody be righteous? Is everybody with me? See, we condemn our own selves by our own testimony. We bring God's judgment on us by testifying something that's not biblical. So tonight, this is what I think I told your mom. You want to just tell her right now? He's concerned about his back. Why well, wouldn't we too? Strong boy, no problems. Back having some weakness. Doesn't have one surgery. I mean, my dog, Don Burleson, that we ordained, one of the first guys we ever ordained from the old building. You know how many times Don's been operating on his back? 17 times. Looks like he's got a crease down the middle of his back. His back just went in like this, got a great big, like a valley up, all the way up down. I've been operating on so much. You don't want that. So what's God, as mama said, why, what's God doing with my boy? Ain't that what we say? Not only is the boy trying to figure it out, but mama is too. So you know what I think? This half hen. The preacher won't have to tell everybody. <laughs> well, I, I ask anybody that's been here a while, I'll use your example as an example sometime along the line. And ask any of them, do I ask you beforehand? No. Probably not. <laughs> so I won't be too bad. Yeah, we're family. <laughs> what if God's calling him to preach? He's going to have to elevate his faith, which goes along with the physical thing. Right. It's going to include her, too. Right. Yes, sir. See, I don't know what God's doing with me. But I will say one thing. You get it. He's even played Jesus a bunch of times. Yes, he has. See, when you play Jesus, oh, you you done stepped in it. Uh, yeah. So how do I know what God's working there? Now, I might be off base, but you, you just got to deal with this table. But when my boys <laughs> back there listened to you the other week, on the way home, they said, man, Josh was great. When you have little 10, 11-year-old, 12-year-old boys saying that, there's something in you. If they can brag after the service about what he's done, say it. So that means God has elevated him, them. Which means the calling is going to go deeper. Which means the commitment has to go deeper. Which means faith has to go deeper. Which means commitment has to get further along. Right. Commitment to what? Everything. Everything of God. 
prayer closets, Bible study, church attendance, it all has to come in line. That might be pretty good. Buddy, you've been there, ain't you? You've been ordained how many years? About almost 40? 35, 30 something? Been preaching that long? So you know it. David, you know it? Anybody's here in church? Where's Kevin at? Is he up young? He knows. But what a lot of you here don't know is you've been ordained too. Just because you didn't get called to be put up here don't mean your calling's any less than mine. Amen. You're a Christian right. just like I am. Yes, I it's required of you just like it is me. The book right. is for you just like it is for me. That's right. Amen. He's great. He's great about revelation. Without faith it's impossible to please God. Well, I know God, but I ain't flying nowhere. On a plane, I ain't going. Well, then your faith ain't going nowhere, son. Because you don't even trust me in that plane. I'm the same God in the air as I am over you on the ground. Well, I can't go overseas. My dial over there. I'm the same God over there as I am here. Are y'all, you listening to me? Well, I just can't do that. Well, you're the same God, the same God loves you at home as I can through teaching in that Sunday school class. See, I believe we've got trust issues, y'all. It's very simple. If you can trust him at home, why can't you trust him everywhere else? How many feel comfortable at your house? Why? Is it because of him or is it your home? Security of who? You? You guns? Or Jesus? Or the angels that camp out around your house? I'm, conf I'm more confident than the angels than man my gun. Amen. In fact, I believe he protects me not based on my guns, but the angels. That's right. That's right. And I ain't getting rid of them, but I'm, the angels is my main thing. So it might be he wants another step. That's why he's taking you to come out your mountain. That's why he's put that woman in. Have you broke up with her? <laughs> All right, you better not. <laughs> if you need counseling, you better talk to me. <laughs> Best thing ever happened to you? Yeah. Find you a little homeless girl. Amen? Amen. Amen. Guys are nuts. <laughs> I get your chance there, ladies, but you missed that one right there. Now, I see there, okay. Listen, God wants to pay you back. And he's done, done everything he can about your sins. That's done. Cross is done, done. Whether or not you get to the Spirit of God, the empty tomb at Pentecost is your call. Cross is done, tomb's empty. Pentecost doesn't happen. The Holy Spirit's been given. What you waiting on? Amen. See, that's not all. How are you going to teach and lead except you get more? That's right. It's taken me a lot of years to put the righteousness and holiness issue together that I could verbalize. I tell them that on Monday night all the time. 20, 25 years ago, people twisted me up by it. They would quote scripture to me through Satan's leading. And I couldn't rebut it or put it together in such a way with talking that they could understand it. And I'd end up frustrated. Eh, not anymore. Because without wholeness, you'll not see God. Right. I won't back up from that. Without holiness, you will not see God. And they won't see God. Amen. So if you want to see God, you settle that one, right? Yes. Then you better settle the wholeness issue in your life. And it makes no difference what it takes for you to get it. You better go ahead and get after it. Because the only two acceptable sights in God's sight is pursuing it or having it. Amen. You're only accepted by pursuing it or having it. Yeah. Everybody with me? 
It's about eyes closed. I'm mean, getting nothing else, and that's all. That's okay. Want her to play right now? Want to give you time to come to the altar? Lord, I pray whoever needs to come and pray right now will come and pray. There's three people here that's lost without you. Three people. They've never sent and asked you with their own lips to ask you to take control of their life and give you control. Or to be saved or forgiven of their sin. They've never done it themselves. Three people. I'm asking you will come tonight and I'll pray with you. We'll have people pray with you at this altar. Maybe you just want to come and pray. Seek the Lord for a need. You might be like John Hyde. Just come and say, Lord, I want to be holy as you're holy. If you want it, he'll put you on the path to attain it. If you hunger after it, he said he'd feel you. It's your choice. You have to do it. I can't do it for you. Tonight I want you to look up here. 